Berg, excused. Monet? Here. Doyle? Here. Graf? Here. Manny? Here. Montemayor? Here. Moody is excused. Perez? Here. Reinfleisch? Here. Stefan? Here. Van Akron? Here. Vanderwilly? Here. Wangaman? Here. Warner is here. Winninger? Here. Here. We have a quorum. On that, I will ask for approval of the minutes from our June 16th, 2003 meeting. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion passes. First thing I want to speak, uh, we do have three older persons who may have lost their survey and were unable to get it uh, filled out and turned in on time. So I do have three copies up here. So if uh, you happen to be one of the older persons that was unable to get yours in, is the Common Council budget policy formulation for 2004. Pick one of these up. Please try to get it filled out and into Mike Hutz by Wednesday. Thank you for that. And I'll start out. I have a brief comment before we start tonight. As everyone knows, we're going to have a presentation by the Sheboygan Police Department tonight. And I would like to welcome everyone to our Committee of the Whole meeting this evening. Tonight's presentation by the Sheboygan Police Department is on a subject we all have a concern about illegal drugs and their use in our community. Sheboygan is not immune to the dangers and problems created by illegal drug use. Over the years, our city has seen a marked change in the type of drugs used. We have seen the negative consequences of that use. These consequences have touched our families, our schools, and our neighborhoods. And that is why we are look working to limit and remove the threat in any way possible. We are addressing the problem, as you will learn this evening, and we will continue to, to do so. The Sheboygan Police Department has been proactive in its mission to contain the use of illegal drugs in our city. Mayor Schramm and others have recognized the need to continue the battle against illegal drugs, and Chief David Kirk and his department will carry out their duty to address the problem. Tonight's program is evidence of that commitment. Chief Kirk. Good evening, Mr. President and Alder people. Uh, first, I'd like to say, um, does this always happen, this falls off? <laughs> Do they? Okay. Uh, first, uh, I'd like to say it's an honor to be here tonight uh, for several reasons. We're present here tonight to, spe to speak on what I deem to be probably one number one concern within our community. And that's drug use, illegal drug use, uh, drug trade, uh, drug abuse. Why is it the number one concern uh, within our, our police department? Because I think I've seen the devastating effects it's had uh, to our citizens, to our families. Also because I believe that a substantial amount of crime that's being committed in our community is tied directly to the drug trade or at least to drug use. Third off, it's wrong, it's illegal. I think in many circles, too many people think it's, it's well or too far well accepted. People talk of drug use, they do drug use, and I think it's time that we publicly say enough is enough. First off, I like to, to begin to say that and to explain where we've been and where we're going. With the, Drug investigations years ago when I was in the criminal investigation division in charge of our MEG unit, which is a multi-enforcement group or the, the drug unit, we would take all the information that we obtained from citizens or aldermen or whatever source of information that came in, we would then provide it to our MEG unit. The MEG unit would then get time to work on it to see if it's tied into their investigations or they'd put it on a file on the side. Um, as I observed some of this, I said, this, this is wrong. The information you obtain needs to be worked on, and if in fact you're working on an investigation, fantastic. However, that information that you don't have time for, if you don't have enough officers for, needs to be referred back to our patrol division. Since we went to community policing uh, department-wide, each officer is assigned a designated district, and they, they need to take ownership of that district. So what we do now is that information, when it's given to us, we then relay it to the MEG unit. 
if they have time for it or if it's tied into some of their investigations they're currently conducting, they take it. And if it isn't, then it's referred back to our patrol officers into designated districts that this alleged drug activity is being reported. And we then give the officers the freedom to do whatever they need to do to address that problem. They do garbage collection or they do observation of the home and try to make a case then that's referred to the district attorney's office or uh, that it involves search warrants or what have you. So these officers on the street are then allowed to, to perform their own little investigations. And the next era in policing and the era that we've been involved in the last three and a half years in our, in our department and one I fully uh, believe in is called community policing and that's the creation of partnerships because the police department can't handle the situation by themselves. They need citizens, they need partnerships and the ability to work with other agencies to get to the bottom of this. So we, we've gone from just a MEG unit working on it to now being brought down to the patrol officers to now going outside and asking for public involvement and help. But the reason we're here today is not because you want to hear from the administration and, and how I see what we're doing. It's because I have two officers here, both officers are 10 year veterans. I have officer uh, Matt Walsh who works patrol division. He was also assigned the multi-jurisdictional drug enforcement unit. He was a mega officer, a drug officer for several years. And then once we identify a problem, certainly I tell my officers, not only tell me what the problem is, but tell me how to solve this problem. And that's where Todd Preby comes in. Certainly with community policing, he's going to then uh, deal with how we're working on this, some of the avenues that we're looking at to form partnerships in different areas of the city. And Alderman Doyle has spoken of before where we have this uh, partnership down in the Longfellow School area, which is ongoing and is, is a tremendous work and effort by our community policing people. Um, we, we're looking towards expanding this next partnership concept into to his district. Um, so first off, I always need to say thank you to the officers for being here today for the commitment that they've given uh, to their to our city to their problems to my problem to your problem I also like to say thank you to the Public Protection and Safety Committee and its members for first off many months back when they asked me to speak on how our department is doing and deal with crime statistics I said uh, to the chairman please let me speak on issues issues that relate to our community issues that are real and that perhaps you're not aware of so we presented our officer Walsh presented a drug use and what is going on in the streets. Public Protection and Safety heard that speech and they said, we really need to give this to the Common Council, to the Committee of the Whole, and I thank you, Mr. President, for allowing us this opportunity to present this here tonight. I think many times, at least I find in the last three and a half years, I, I feel I have a, a, a tendency not to relate what's really going on in the streets to the public out of fear that the public would then over respond and say this is a, a harsh community. But I think we're going to break that mold here, mold here today and say, listen, this is what's going on in the streets. Please listen. But not only listen, if you have questions, ask. We will present what's going on in the streets and then what we're doing to counter that. So with that, I think it takes creativity and understanding on your part, listening and a willingness to, to let community policing take hold. I think at the present time, we have some excellent opportunities for uh, cooperative uh, working together. And with that, first I'm going to introduce Matt, Matt Walsh. He'll be our first presenter and then Officer Todd Preby. So with that, Matt. Thank you, Steve. Thank you for having me, Mr. President. Um, my name is Matt Walsh. I've been a police officer, as the chief said, for 10 years, um, I was in the drug unit in 2001 and 2002. Uh, I think that was really a successful position for me. Conservatively, I can say I, I seized my cases alone out of the city, about $400,000 worth of drugs, mostly cocaine. Um, we have a big problem here with crack cocaine. Um, you all have seen 2020. And they talk about ecstasy. Ecstasy is a dying fad. If you don't believe it, go to erowid.com, E-R-O-W-I-D. They, they have users on there talking about the side effects. Are, they're horrible. They speak frankly about the side effects. Ecstasy is going to fade out here just like our fashion. 
is slow to get to the Midwest. Ecstasy is slow to die here. Um, along the same lines, marijuana, when I was in the drug unit, I had informants tell me it was hard to get after the Alvarez brothers went to prison. Okay, crack cocaine. There's a difference between powder cocaine and crack cocaine. Powder cocaine can almost be used on a recreational basis. Users can control their addiction, use it only on weekends. Crack is different. Crack is boiled in the microwave with water and baking soda. And then you pour it out in this mushy goo into like a brownie pan, let it dry for 24 hours, and then you cut it up like brownies into small eraser-sized chunks. Part of the problem with these eraser-sized chunks is in Milwaukee, that chunk sells for $30. And here it sells for $100. I made many undercover buys in broad daylight and controlled buys through the use of informants, probably hundreds of crack cocaine where 0.4 grams weighed out to cost me $100. So roughly speaking, crack is $200 a gram. Powder is $100 a gram here in Sheboygan. Sheboygan is a source city for crack cocaine. People from Manitowoc come to Sheboygan specifically to get crack. Um, crack is extremely addictive, unlike powder. Crack cocaine has an addictive propensity where there's a one-hour cycle. The first 15 minutes is absolute euphoria. The next 15 minutes, the user kind of comes down. The next 15 minutes, they never want to do crack again. And then 15 minutes later, they have to have more. I learned that I was starting to put my informants at jeopardy by doing only one controlled buy to get a search warrant. That was my job, to get search warrants. Um, we had to go back and do another one an hour and 15 minutes later. This addictive one-hour cycle breeds property crime and violent crime. After about an hour, hour and 15 minutes, these people will do anything to get this drug. A lot of our property crimes, car thefts, are all drug-related. A lot of our violent crime is all drug-related. I had informants tell me that they knew of 35-year-old Sheboyganite housewives that would do oral sex to get crack, that would rent out their 15-year-old's bedroom to a drug dealer so they can get free crack from the dealers who are not typically from Sheboygan so they could get free crack and allow their house to be dealt out of. Where and when does this happen? Surprisingly, most of the deals go down during the day, right under all of our noses. It's really too dangerous to do it at night because there is so few cars. There's so little movement that, you know, the police on the nighttime have less traffic to deal with, so they're kind of pulling over a larger percentage of the cars, stopping a larger percentage of the foot traffic. During the day, when we're all doing our legitimate business, is when these people are meeting at, I can say across the board, all the north side mini marts and all the north side grocery stores. I have bought drugs in their parking lots. I have made arrests in all three of their parking lots, very recently, in fact. Um, they hide the drugs. They know not to keep it in the house. They know about the short-term traffic with neighbors and aldermen calling. Um, they'll do the deal at um, a mini mart in the parking lot. Meet me there in five minutes. I'll be in a red neon. They'll bury the drugs in Kiwanis Park. I had several cases like that. They'll do the deal at, at the, our largest department stores and convenience stores right at noon, using us and our children as cover putting our kids at risk. Some of our local grocery stores and mini marts sell drug paraphernalia. One of those paraphernalia items is um, what my mom used to clean dishes with, that's a uh, copper Brillo pad, commonly referred to as chore boy. That's the filter. That acts as the filter for crack. Crack is smoked. That's the only way you can consume crack, is to smoke it in a glass pipe with this chore boy acting as a cigarette filter. And I've literally seen the crack pipe so hot that their fingers will develop blisters. I saw a 15-year-old girl from North that had burn marks on her lips, and that even shocked me. Um, we have another problem. 
Problem number two is OxyContin. I spoke with a pharmacist that used to be from the Madison area, and um, she wrote very little prescriptions for OxyContin until she transferred to the Madison Sheboygan area. OxyContin is, um, if you're not familiar with it, its legal use is for someone who has very serious cancer, a lot of pain. OxyContin has a time release. You take one pill, it lasts 12 hours. By crushing that pill, the user realized you get that release all in one blast. And it's called hillbilly heroin. And there's only three ways to get it. False prescription, stealing it from your sick parent, which happens all the time, and a false prescription. We have a major OxyContin problem here, use. Um, also, users from Sheboygan trade OxyContin to the dealers who aren't from here, and they trade for crack. The OxyContin goes back to Milwaukee, because Oxy's very hard to get there. Um, that's really all I had pre-programmed. Um, I, I think it probably shocked you. If you have questions for me now, or if you'd like to wait until after Todd is done, um, either way is up to you. Okay, Todd? Thanks, Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, one, one thing, if I can, it's uh, Mr. Chairman. The President is sitting over there. I don't want to be taking his place. I'm not oh, I'm Thank you. Let's Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. Right now, our home and personal safety is at risk, as you just had heard from Officer Walsh. Drugs are being sold right underneath our noses. And this is not something that's going unnoticed by our department. We are doing our best to, to deal with these um, ways of selling and the people that are selling. But we're getting to the point now we, gotta, we have to get the help from the community. The drugs are being sold right underneath our noses, as you just heard from Officer Walsh. That's why we're out there with our children at the store, while the kids are playing in the playground, while they're playing in our neighborhoods. It's just a matter of time before the frequency of the shootings increases. Before drug deals go bad and competition between drug dealers. Sheboygan averages approximately 300 burglaries a year. And the majority of them are drug related. And this was pretty much confirmed by the offenders that commit these burglaries themselves. I went to Wisconsin Department of Corrections uh, the probation and parole office, and I sat in on a group discussion with about 12 offenders. And I had asked him, I says, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but my opinion is the majority of our burglaries in town are drug related. 10 out of the 12 nodded their head yes, and quite a few of them were nodding their head very enthusiastically, like, oh yeah. Okay, you heard from Matt. The majority of our murders and robberies are drug related. And there is no neighborhood that's exempt from this type of activity. It has been known that drug dealers will buy houses in upscale neighborhoods. This isn't just subjected to the parking lots of stores and our older sections of town. So you gotta ask yourself, do you feel safe right now? Do you feel safe in your districts knowing about this stuff? Do you feel comfortable letting children play in the neighborhood? How does it make you feel knowing that a drug dealer can buy a house in your neighborhood? And that's any neighborhood in town. If we don't take action now, we will be like in Milwaukee in 10 to 15 years. A former drug investigator from the MEG unit had made that statement. And it just so happens Don Quare from Modesto, California, who is with us tonight, she confirms that. She was raised in Modesto, California, a, a community roughly the same size as Sheboygan. She left it because of the drug problems. And when she gets here, because of her experience and knowledge about the drugs, she's, she's seen for herself that the same scenario is unfolding. The same scenario that she had just left in Modesto, California is now occurring here in this town. She is battling a drug house by herself. 
And that's not uncommon in this, in this community. We must look at the drug problem as a community problem. And it's going to take the community to solve it. Law enforcement, we can't do it by ourselves anymore. The single household fighting a neighborhood drug house, fighting the good fight by themselves, has to end. What's happening in a neighborhood is happening because it's tolerated by the neighborhood. Sheboygan citizens can no longer ignore the problem, thinking somebody else is going to deal with it, or there's some magic wand that can be waved and the problem will go away. It's going to take hard work and partnerships within our community to deal with this. It's going to take every man, woman, child, healthcare worker, civic groups, churches, law enforcement, DA's office, judges, city attorney's office, landlords, the school district, the list goes on. We have to build strong partnerships. So do the partnerships work? You bet they do. You can ask three of your own aldermen right here in this room. Alderman Manning, Perez, and Doyle. They all have, and, and Mayor, have all been involved at different degrees with our problem solving efforts and our partnership building with the Institute of Public Safety Partnerships from the University of Illinois at Chicago when we targeted the Longfellow School area. And the things that have come out of that group proves that partnerships work. We don't have all the resources of a law enforcement agency. We have to tap into the, the community resources and expertise to help us with our community problems. And that's what we did down there. We targeted Longfellow School. We addressed a particular issue. And we've been successful. In fact, we're planning a, a neighborhood celebration at the end of the month. It's not going to end there. We're going to get facilitators training. And we're going to take this on, and we're going going to continue in other districts. And Alderman Doyle wants to be first in line to target his district. Partnerships do work, and that is the way of the future. That is the way we have to conduct business from this point on. It's successful, and it works. So what do we need to do? There are some great efforts that are starting in Sheboygan County and the city of Sheboygan. One, we've got a group. Uh, that I started called Neighbors Against Drugs, NAD. And I am asking for anybody and everybody who is willing to get involved in an action group to take part in this, this, uh, this group. Okay? We are going to deal with the illegal drugs in town. We are going to collaboratively define a drug problem that we realistically can solve. We know we're not going to get rid of drugs in town. We know that but we can surely have a dramatic impact on the availability, okay? So we're going we're gonna to strategize and design a program, okay? And then we're going to set a goal, and then we're going to discuss objectives. And we're going to get out of our shells, and we're going to get into the neighborhoods, we're going to get in the parking lots, and we're going to start having an impact on our drug issue in this community. But now that goes hand in hand with another effort that Phil DeKett and the United uh, Community for Youth and the Healthy Sheboygan County 2010 AODA committee is involved in. Okay. My group, I'll talk about that in a second, my group is going to meet next on Tuesday, July 28th at 12 noon at the Mead Public Library, the Josephine A. Rococa Meeting Room. And if you can't make a noon meeting, a evening meeting is set for Wednesday, August 6th at 7 p.m., also at the Mead Public Library at the Josephine A. Rococa Meeting Room. Now, the Healthy Sheboygan County 2010 AODA Committee, of which I am a member of, supports any efforts that are made towards the illegal drugs. Sheboygan County was fortunate, fortunate enough to receive a three-year state initiative grant to help shape a collaborative, community-wide focus on substance abuse prevention efforts targeting youth ages 12 to 17. And we plan on working with a diverse cross-section of the community in order to effectively utilize resources to prevent youth substance abuse. 
We are very concerned about the use and the abuse of alcohol, particularly by youth. It is part of the larger picture of the community health. This group is, is also looking for anybody who is willing to participate with our efforts to join in, and you can feel free to contact Phil Duquette from the United Community for Youth at 280-6266. Now this is open, everything that I'm talking about here is open to the whole community, okay? I'm encouraging anybody, anybody and everybody to get involved. Thirdly, the Sheboygan Area School District is also pro, um, planning on addressing the problem. And they have a public input session on Tuesday, August 5th at 6.30 p.m. at the Horseman Middle School. And anybody who is interested in uh, providing their input are encouraged to attend that meeting. Fourth, the community needs to support other programs and ideas that somehow indirectly or directly impact our drug issues. Uh, we're targeting January 2004 with a neighborhood pride contest. The contest is designed to you reunite neighborhoods, build this unity and the pride and the spirit amongst the, the neighbors and also address home and personal security and a whole wide range of things that will have an everlasting effect on that neighborhood. But one of the things that is not tolerated in this contest is a drug house. It's not tolerated. We need, we need jobs. We need good jobs. We know what's happening in our county. We need to support efforts that encourage job growth. And when I heard of Mayor Schramm's idea of a high-tech park, I thought that was great. And we need to be supportive of that. Supportive of his efforts in working with the, the uh, county board and trying to make this possible, especially before the PGA. It makes sense. And lastly, parents can no longer continue to believe that their, their children are exempt from alcohol or drug abuse or use. Parents need to reevaluate their attitude or their acceptance in letting their kids smoke cigarettes, smoke marijuana, or drink. The majority of teens get involved in substance use because they're bored or in need of excitement. Parents need to take an active role in their kids' lives. It starts at home. And if they feel that there is a problem or they suspect there's a problem, they need to talk about it and they need to take some action. They need to get help. That's all I have. You brought up a point, I wanted, a couple of points I wanted to follow up on. Some of the things you said real quick tipped off something and that last thing about parents. I've been back out on the road now for seven months answering calls and it's really been a lot, a lot of fun and a lot less stress. I'll arrest a kid at Urban, for, for example, and I'll ask him who his parents are. <laughs> I just shake, I can't believe it. I just shake my head. It was somebody, it was, it was a, a known crackhead that are parenting these kids. I couldn't believe it. Um, the other things, some things, some things that Todd said is I had an informant in December of '02 tell me, based on his life experience of growing up in Milwaukee, as a, starting to smoke crack in 1988, kicking it, becoming a group counselor for kids, relapsing, getting fired, becoming a crackhead again, and coming to Sheboygan. He told me this community is primed for violence. That scared the crap out of me. I've had an informant that had a crack baby. I had an undercover officer on the north side in someone's basement and a group of women were smoking crack and on the, the tape that I'm monitoring for the officer's security, I can hear and almost close my eyes and visualize toddlers pulling on mom's shirt, going over and over and over, mom, mom, mom. And I can hear the crackling pipe in the back. Um, I failed to mention retail theft as being, th those items are traded for drugs. Yonkers right now is being inundated with retail theft. That uh, a lot of these drugs, drug dealers are trading, taking trade, they don't take cash. Or they will, they prefer cash, obviously. 
Um, and I made a last note here, and I said, it's about time. Oh, that, that saying it reminded me. When we were kind of trying to bring the new own ring to an end, at 10th and Superior, I had a neighbor come up to me, and I was in my full SWAT gear, and we had a no-knock search warrant because I knew they had a 44 caliber gun, and they did. And the neighbor came up to me and said, it's about time. Boy, I was so mad. Did you ever call me? It took me months, I know, but I'm trying the hardest I can. It's about time you finally got here. It's been so obvious. Well, it's hard to get a search warrant and, and you know, essentially take some action and get around the Fourth Amendment. Um, thank you. I guess at this time, I once again like to say thank you for allowing us to present probably a topic which was probably more factual than what we've addressed to you in the past. The reason we've done it is for a number of reasons. First off, we are dealing with this problem. We have been. We dealt with it strictly through the MEG unit. We have now opened it up to the entire membership of our department saying you are responsible for your area, your community. I think public protection and safety, safety you are well aware of community policing and its efforts and its ability to deal with uh, problems. And it's all about problem solving. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it's all about forming partnerships and calling out and working with other agencies such as the district attorney's office, the school district, which we're, we're certainly glad to see that they're here. And it's all about the situation is getting bad, it's getting worse, but it's not unbearable. It's certainly not something that our community has to sit here and, and uh, be deathly afraid of. However, we're asking for your help, for the automatic support to say, listen, this is what we understand and this is what we need. So with that, thank you for listening. I went to the street level officers because administratively, I can sit in my office all day long and read reports and say that's the way it is. I worked the road for many, many years myself, and I could see it getting worse and worse and worse, and that's why we went to community policing and problem solving efforts and partnerships is where it's at. It's going out to the community saying, please, if you know about something, get back to us. And one part of community policing is any complaint that comes in will be responded to, and the complainant will receive a, a phone call one way or the other as to what the situation, how it's been handled. And if you don't get a call back, please call my office or call a supervisor because those who complain or those who want some information have a right to know what the answer is or what's being done on it. So with that, if you have questions, certainly fire away. Well, thank you, Chief. I think it's important to note that uh, we are doing something about it in Sheboygan, our mayor, our police department, and what, what we intend as the third tier is our, our neighborhoods, the people that live in the community, to help us address these problems. And I think that in that, we can say in Sheboygan, we are trying to address it before it gets worse. And I think that's a good thing. It's a positive to be proactive. On that, I'd open the floor to questions. And Alderman Groff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I do have a question, but first of all, I, I want to say I'm glad you presented this and had street level officers come and, and give us this information because so often I hear it many places throughout Sheboygan that we don't have a problem here. They think we're isolated. And um, just in, in my line of business, for instance, which is child support, we also hear, well, we don't have a paternity problem here, but we do too. And so um, with that, uh, Officer Welsh had, had stated something about three ways to get oxy. Um, yes. Whatever it's called. And I only got down two of them. Well, can you, I've got, um, false prescriptions and steal from their parents? Uh, the third way would be um, armed, uh, an armed robbery or a, or a burglary of a pharmacy. Or uh, recently there was one at uh, the clinic that was ransacked and went through very recently. Okay, thank you. Alderman Perez. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A uh, couple of questions, but first I'd like to thank uh, Chief Kirk for their presentation and Officer Preby and Officer Walsh. I know that uh, Officer Preby and Officer Winter are doing a, a tremendous job at the Longfellow Project there, and uh, I'm truly glad to have been a small part of that. Uh, so much work has gone into it, and uh, I think that the, uh, the results are going to be uh, in our favor in, in that respect, so thank you very much. The, uh, the, second, uh, the first question I had is, uh, you, Chief, you mentioned some of the things that we can do, but it, I would, I would like as an alderman to, to, to be 
inform as to what specific things we can do, not necessarily now, but in the future. What is it that the, that the council can do as a body, as a political body for you and for the community so we can address this problem and nip it at the bud? We're doing basically the same thing at the school district as, as you've mentioned, um, and we're looking to get tough. And I think painting the picture as you have today, as, as bad as it looks, that's, that's how we need to paint it. That's how we need to deal with it. My third question was more, more in line of concern for Officer Walsh as, as an undercover. Do you risk your life by exposing yourself as an undercover agent here, or how? Absolutely. Uh, I, two instances I can think of off the top of my head. At uh, the intersection of 14th and Wisconsin, I was trying to buy crack from two men, and they patted me down looking for a wire. They ran their hand, a wire being a transmitting device to see if I was an informant or a police officer. They ran their hand down the middle of my back and came around the side of my hip and he put his hand on my gun, which was in my groin. That, I was very scared. Um, I used to use a bicycle as a tactic and, and that did work often, but that shook me up and that deal did not go down. Those, those two are right now still, I caught them in a different way. Um, they're still in custody looking at, and he'd been caught and out again. Been to prison at 18, out at 20, caught again at 21. Um, not from this community. Making a ton of money in this community, but not living here. Um, and then the other instance, um, I gave my business card to an informant in fall of 02, and he just gave it back to me, says, I don't want to talk to you, they want to kill you. He's like, you're him, you're the Matt. And then I knew it was time to get out. <laughs> And the chief knew it was time to get out, too. <laughs> I, I was also asking, is there a danger now presented to you by exposing yourself to the camera and the public as an undercover agent? Um, I'm not overly concerned about Okay. Thank okay. you for your concern. Just to, to follow up real briefly on what you said, um, Juan, first off, basically when we present information that we're not going to present something that's not factual. We will present it as, as honestly as we can. I would have to say that since I've been a chief and since I've been here with the Sheboygan Police Department, well, scratch that, since I've been, been a chief, I've received great support from the aldermen, from the mayor. The eight vacancies we had earlier this year, it was our responsibility, our calling that we would hold off. The four vacancies we have at the present time is our calling at this time. The mayor has supported us. He's listened to it. The mayor is aware of some of this. We've, we kept the mayor appraised of what was going on with the drug issue and, and the violence. And I predicted that the, the violence was going to become much worse. And that year we had four homicides. And each and every one of those, um, I don't know if I should even go there, Joe, if some of these are still to be prosecuted. but. They're related to drugs. Um, so I think we, when we come to you, we come for support and understanding. Uh, certainly we understand the budget concerns and the restraints. Um, so we, we need to work together. We need to open up dialogue and, and talk. And, and um, I think, Matt, you may, you may want to touch, or uh, Todd. Yeah, I'm Todd, thanks. <laughs> um, also to address how can the Common Council get invo involved. And there's, there's a variety of groups. There's the Healthy Sheboygan County 2010 AODA. You are a resource and a valuable resource to a group like that. Okay, you, you, you're very valuable resources. So by attending these meetings, you provide information and expertise on what you're capable of doing and what you're not capable of doing. And we don't know that unless somebody from the Common Council is there. That's no different from NAD, the Neighbors Against Drugs. It's going to be important to have members of the Common Council there so that they're aware of what's going on and where they fit in. You know, what resource, what tool can they bring to the table that these groups can capitalize on? Um, and then also, um, there was a third. 
of course, there's a neighborhood pride contest and just being active in that. But the other thing was uh, our facilitators training is going to allow us to continue the problem solving training that we had done for the Longfellow School area. And there's another opportunity for the Common Council, uh, members of the Common Council to get involved and uh, get the, the training in how to identify and solve some of the problems in your district. So those are the three ways off the top of my head specifically when it comes to this kind of stuff. Thank you. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Chief and uh, Officer Walsh. Any other questions? Uh, Mayor Schramm. Thank you, Alderman Warner. I would encourage each and every council person to get involved. The aldermen who have been involved so far have been doing an excellent job working with the police department. Uh, Matt and Todd, uh, it's been working out very well, very well in the city, and we can only make it work if we participate and get involved in there and, and chief you're doing an excellent job also uh, i got involved in the south side neighborhood and it's tremendous what you can do when you get the community together and working with you our new lighting project at longfellow i believe that will help the community and in, in the longfellow area uh, tremendously and we can do that each and every one of us if the alderman just take time to get involved in that and I know uh, Alderman Doyle is next. He has to be next on the list. Obviously, we can't do every area all at once. We'd love to, but uh, if you each take your turn, get involved and work with us, uh, we're there to work with you also, and we'll make this happen. We weren't rated the number one city in 1997 to raise a family for nothing, and we're going to stay that way. Uh, thank you, Mayor Schramm. Uh, what do we got? You done? On that, I guess I'd like to say thank you to officers Walsh and Preby, Chief Kirk, for such an informative presentation. I think it was, and that's what I expected. I think your department's approach to this will help to stem ad the advance of illegal drugs in Sheboygan. And I think we as a city have our work cut out for us, and only we as a united community will be able to have a positive impact on this problem. I would like to thank Mayor Schramm for his continued support of the police department in dealing with drugs in our community. And I would also like to thank our patrol officers, the men and women on the street. I thank you for your commitment and dedication. Chief Kirk and the entire department, I thank you. And I guess I would say to the citizens of Sheboygan, please take the time to become involved. Be the eyes and ears of the Sheboygan Police Department and together we will have a positive impact on drug use in the city of Sheboygan. And thanks to all of you for being here tonight. On that, uh, move to adjourn. <laughs> okay, we'll let it lay over. 651 through 654 to be referred. 655, by Public Protection and Safety, recommend denying beverage operator's license 1642 based on the applicant's ineligibility for licensing. Alderman Doyle. No, no he's not here. Vanderbilt. Alder Alderman Vanderbilt. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion to accept and adopt the RO. And uh, I would ask at this time if uh, license holder number 1642 is, is here. She is not, so I'd like to make a motion to deny license number 1642. It's been moved in second for denial of license number 1642. <coughs> Under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Manny? Aye. Amanda Mayer? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Brinfleisch, Aye. Van Akron, Vanderbilt, Wangaman, Aye. Warner, Aye. Wenninger, Aye. Bauman, Aye. Berg, Bonet, Graf. 14 eyes. Motion carried. 656 and 657, excuse me, Alderman Bauman. Thank you, Your Honor. On item number 656, mm -hmm. I would move at this time to file this. Uh, 
general ordinance. Moved and second to file. Under discussion, Alderman Bauman. Thank you, Your Honor. The reason I'm asking to file it is because we've been discussing this particular item in Public Works Committee, and we've been asking that the city attorney look into extending this, if he can, uh, to other than just the vehicles under 8,000 pounds, if this is what state law allows. So needless to say, or over 8,000 pounds, my apology. And at this time, this is why I'd like to see it move to file, only because we'd like to come out with a different recommendation. Okay. Alderman Groff. Your Honor, um, I'm not sure, but I believe that this came out as a result of workings in, um, in finance as well as the, the uh, city attorney's office uh, that they wanted to, to do something with this. And I thought, but of course you were gone last week. Maybe you didn't get a chance to look at, at this. Uh, Alderman Graff, my recollection was this was drafted at your request uh, that's brought in under your name. I, I drafted it up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I guess the document was being referred to finance. Couldn't this be referred to finance and then they could discuss the changes there? Is there any reason why we can't do that? I'd like you, have, to you have a motion to file right now and that takes mm -hmm. precedent. So if you can vote the motion down if you want and then refer it to finance. And send it to finance. It, it is under discussion on a motion. Why would we want to do that? Then we can take it, send it to finance, and if they want to make changes to it, I guess Alderman Bauman, is there any reason why we couldn't do that? Mm. I would totally object to it. Okay. <coughs> Hearing no other, all in favor to uh, file, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. aye. Motion carries, file. Okay, 550. We didn't say what happened to 657. 657 to be referred. I said that, but he You didn't get me. that far. You, you, okay. You mentioned the number, but you didn't say. 550, RO, by the Director of Human Resources and Labor Relations relative to the tentative agreement with the Sheboygan Professional Police Officer Association. Alderman Van Akron. Your Honor, can we also take 565, 551, 550, 566, 552, and 567? If you'd like to, sir. I move that uh, all the ROs be filed and uh, all three resolutions be put upon its passage. Second. Moved and seconded that all ROs be accepted and filed in the resolutions for the uh, professional police officers. Union asked me what one 1564. A couple asked me 1564 agreements. Um, firefighters, IAFF local 483. That should do it, right? Now, I, uh, I want to make an amendment on the three resolutions. On all three contracts, I'd like to add a 2.5% employee's premium share, effective 6103 for all three contracts. Excuse me. I was under the impression, because we don't have any of the um, terms in the resolution, that the terms are in the RO, that you want, would want to amend the RO just to explain what the... The ROs you want to amend is the resolutions? Because we don't have any terms in the resolutions. Uh, this, this is what... Okay. So you want to... What is the amendment then? Uh, a 2.5 employees premium share, effective 6103 for all three contracts. Right. Okay. And that's not it showing up in, in any of the contracts. Right. Okay. We have a... Go ahead. Just to clarify, I believe, uh, Alderman Van Akron, that that's to clarify the language in the ROs that sets forth the tentative agreements that talks about the 2.5% employee premium share. This, this is to clarify the starting date, I, I yes, believe. There's no need in there. Correct, Ed? Correct. Okay. It's in the tentative agreements. Okay, we have an amendment before us. First, we've got to vote on amendment. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, proceed. I move that all three resolutions be put upon its passage. As amended. As amended. Not our rule is amended. Our rules. Our 
and the resolution. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Pat, would you call the roll, please? Manda Mayor. Aye. Oh, excuse me. Aye. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Before we vote, uh, I'd like to offer a few comments because as I look at the contracts and appreciate all the work that goes into them and respect the numbers that are there given a normal economic climate, um, today I have problems with these because of the economic climate that we're in and the cut in the shared revenue. Uh, if we pass these, I believe that we'll look at a situation where individual employees will be terminated as one viable approach to watching our budget and balancing it. It's either that or tax increases of some significance that are quite possible. Um, I simply would like to state my perspective on the whole issue and suggest that a broader way of looking at, at some of this might be to uh, take a lead ourselves and to take lesser salaries across the board in the city. From department's head, from mayors, possibly cuts in older people's salaries so that employees and unions also taking lower increases than here printed would not feel duly um, discriminated against. So I would prefer an approach like that. This is throwing a monkey wrench into the whole thing. I simply state this would be my preference in one way to address the situation that we're facing today. Thank you. You're welcome. If there's no other discussion, Pat, would you call the roll, please? Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderwill? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonnet? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? No. 13 ayes, one no. Motion carried. 583, by Alderman Gross, Stefan Doyle, Boney, authorizing transfer, transferring appropriations in the 2003 budget. Alderman Gross. Yeah, I'll move that the resolution be put upon his passage. Move to second the resolution be put upon his passage, under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Moody, Perez, Rinfleisch, Van Akron, Vanderweel, Wangaman, Warner, Winninger, Bauman, Berg, Bonet, Aye. Graf, Aye. Manny, Aye. Ma Montemite Mayor. Aye. 14 eyes. Motion <laughs> carried. It's a mouthful. <laughs> 460. Public Works recommending entering into a contract for the South Pier District Riverfront Promenade. Alderman Bauman. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd move that we accept and file the report of committee and pass the attached resolution. Second. Move to second to accept and adopt the RC and pass the resolution. Under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderbilt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weniger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carried. 658 will go to finance. 659 will go to Public Works. 660, Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to make a motion to uh, have Ordinance 660 lie over. You don't need a motion for that. It's on the it's agenda for lying over. Is it? Yeah. It oh, it doesn't? It doesn't say on there, no. Oh, okay. we forgot That's to put okay. it. It'll lie over. <laughs> That's okay. right. It's the other matter. That's why it does, it's not on there. Okay. Just Thank you. Somewhere. It'll lie over. That's right. It's other 661, along with 642, a resolution by Alderman Groff. We did that. I did that. Okay. Steve? Um, they're printed, so he doesn't have to read them? Yeah, they're on the amended sheet. Yeah. Oh, okay. 662 can be accepted and placed on file. Alderman Groff. Moved and second to place the RO on file. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 663 will go to plan. 664 will go to city plan commission. 665 will go to city plan commission. 666, a resolution by Alderman Bonet authorizing granting permission on behalf of the city for the Blue Harbor project developer to commence certain construction work. Alderman Bonet. Could the resolution on <coughs> 
Second. Put the resolution upon passage. Second. Moved and seconded resolution be put upon this passage under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Rinfleisch? Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weiniger? Aye. Fallman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Groff? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carried. 667 will go to City Plan Commission. 668. 668 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Gary Plummer requesting an encroachment into the north side of Mayflower Avenue west of North 13th Street for the purpose of maintaining an existing fence for property located at 1330 Mayflower. That will go to Plan Commission. 669 is an ordinance granting Gary Plummer his heirs signs privilege of encroaching upon described portions of Mayflower Avenue for the purpose of maintaining an existing fence. That will also go to Plan Commission. Moved and seconded to adjourn under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed?